I want to tell you, Jesus was the same yesterday. He is the same today. He's the same next month, next year. He is the same, the same Jesus who healed at Galilee, the same Jesus who healed in Capernaum, in Jerusalem, that same Jesus can heal in Macon, Georgia, in Atlanta, and all over this world today. He is the same Jesus. The healing touch of Jesus. Psalm 103, verses 2 and 3. Says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Well, first, first, our God is a supernatural God. He is a supernatural God. He healed. He, it wasn't the case that God, you know, was there and he said, wow, this was a miracle. It was the common, ordinary practice. And many times it says, and Jesus healed all that came to him. He healed uh, and he ministered uh, and he moved in the supernatural world uh, of, of this day. He was the God of creation. He took a handful of dirt and he made a body. And it was just a lifeless body. It was just a, a body. It was shaped. It was formed. It was perfect. But he breathed into that body. The Ruah, the breath of life, eternal, and the, li and the body came to life, eyes opened, it awakened, it came to life uh, because God had breathed the breath of life into that body and it became an eternal living soul. David said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He did. He said, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made by the hand of God. You can look at your eye real quickly. Your eye has over three million light sensors in it and it, and it operates not only to see, uh, to distinguish colors, to distinguish depth perception. Somebody throws a baseball at you, you can determine how fast it's coming by your eyes. Did you know you've got over 75,000 miles of blood vessels in your body enough to go around the, the world? God made it. You've got a little pump, a muscle as big as your hand that can pump and pump and it will last for 70, 80, 90, 100 years, and it is designed by God, uh, and it works. Uh, and on and on I could go with the marvels. That's why David said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. The red blood cell carries oxygen and food to the body. It carries it, and it moves, and it works, uh, and it has a, I can't go into it, but it has a missing nucleus that it carries it. It goes on and on. We did not evolve from a sail. We were not some little ooze that was there and it evolved and evolved. We were created in the image of God. God made man. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God made man. And he holds the oceans in the palm of his hand. He calls the stars. He hung in space millions of years. 
many that are out there. He calls them by name. He is the shepherd of the stars. He is the miracle worker. He is the living God. They came to Jesus not because of his eloquence. They came to Jesus not because of his speech, not because he gave a a good talk to them, but they came to Jesus because of his unusual power. He healed the lame man. He said, rise and walk. The blind man's eyes were open. The man with the crippled hand, he stretched it out uh, and it was healed uh, under the power of the living God. Uh, He healed, uh, he ministered, and he touched all who came unto him. Uh, Jesus healed in many different ways. He never... He never... uh, had a set pattern. He never had a set way. He never had a, you know, the blind man, he, t- he healed one blind man by touching him on the eyes. We could have the church of the one touch. Or he healed another blind man by touching him twice. We could have the church of the two touch. He healed another blind man by taking some dirt, spitting in it, making some mud, putting it on his eyes, and telling him to go wash in the pool of Siloam. We could have the church of the mud in your eye. (laughs) We could have all kinds of stuff. But God never put himself in a box. He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I want to tell you this morning that God heals People. He heals uh, in his own way and in his own time. He heals. Uh, he uses medical science. He uses physicians. He uses medicine. He uses the supernatural power of the living God to heal and touch uh, a life and a body. I know one, one uh, family that was their child had asthma, very, very bad, and, and they were praying, and an evangelist came to town, and they said, let's ask him to pray for the, for the child. And the evangelist said, okay, I'll pray that this asthma will go away. And, and the, the evangelist prayed, and he said, God, heal this child. Do whatever is necessary. Well, that night, after the evangelist prayed, the child had a horrible Uh, episode with asthma, could not breathe, they couldn't do anything, they took the child to the emergency room to uh, try to help it, and and, uh, while it was there, a renowned doctor had been in town giving a, a lecture, and the doctor said, let me see, they said, oh, it's just a child with asthma, he said, well, let me see that it's, it's come in, and the doctor went and saw the child, and saw the need, and said, I can help this child. I can help it. And he did a procedure, and the child never had asthma again. Now you can say, that was the doctor that did that. But that doctor was there for one day, one night, and God directed them to the hospital to the person who could help them. And God did a miracle that day. You know, he prayed. Remember in John chapter 4, the nobleman's son. The nobleman comes. He says, Lord, please come with me. You've got to come with me back home because my son is at the point of death and he's going to die if you don't come. And Jesus said, go thy way. Thy son lives. And the man believed God. He believed God. You see, God was demonstrating that there was no distance in prayer. There's no distance 
and healing. There's no time or space or distance in the healing power of the living God. And he demonstrated it along with many other things that he demonstrated during this time. He demonstrated, secondly, secondly, the time of miracles has not ended. It has not ended. Jesus said to his church, Greater things than these shall ye do in my name. I want to tell you, it's not greater. It's not greater in quality, but it's greater in quantity. It's greater in the quantity and in the power of what's going to happen. He said greater. I want you to see that. Hebrews 13 and 8. Hebrews 13 and 8 says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. I want to tell you, Jesus was the same yesterday. He is the same today. He's the same next month, next year. He is the same, the same Jesus who healed at Galilee. The same Jesus who healed in Capernaum, in Jerusalem. That same Jesus can heal in Macon, Georgia, in Atlanta, and all over this world today. He is the same Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mark 16, verse 17 and 18. He says, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I want you to see that. He said, they're going to cast out. He, he said, they're going to cast out devils you got to get the devil out before you can get Jesus in. He said they're going to cast out the devils. He said they're going to lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. Who is he talking about? The New Testament church. Jesus Christ uh, is here today. He's alive. He seeks to heal and touch and change your body. Jesus Christ is here Today, they shall, they shall lay hands. In James chapter 5, verse 14 and verse 15, he says, Is there any sick among you? Is there any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint with oil and pray for the sick and the sick shall be saved. I want you to see there is power for them that say the time is over. He didn't say, bring them to the apostles. He said, bring them to the elders of the New Testament church. He said this at the end of the apostolic age, not at the beginning, clearly Evidence he intended for the church to go forth with healing and power in its wings and be a force for God. He intended it to go forth with power. He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Not I was the Lord. Not I will be the Lord. He said, I am the Lord. I want you to see that. He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I have come with healing in my wings. You say, but I don't understand that. I, I just really, I don't understand it. Well, there's a lot of things I don't understand. I don't really understand electricity. I, I really can't totally grasp it, but I flip those lights on. I flip the air conditioning on. I use it even though I don't understand it. You know, seeds, you know, you look at a little tiny seed and you go, what in the world is this? But you plant that seed and you water that seed and life comes out of that and it springs up and it brings hope and food and it brings all that God has for it. 
I don't understand it all, but I can use it. Thirdly, healing was provided in the atonement. Healing was provided in the atonement. I want you to read this text. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. The text combines the two. Forgiveness of sin and healing of disease is combined. They're two natures. God formed the body and he breathed into it and it became a physical body. How many of you know a physical body? You're in one or you're dead. You're in one or you're dead. In a physical body, you are. But you know what? He breathed and it became a living soul. It became alive. There's a physical world. There's a spiritual world. There's a twofold world. And God made provision for healing of your body and healing of your soul. He said, let the soul be healed. Let the body be he- healed. Let it come with power. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 and 5, he says, He has borne our griefs. He has carried our sorrows, yet we did stream him, stricken, smitten of God. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. We are healed. Amen. There's healing. There's healing. And, and you know, it's, you know, there's some that say, well, that, now they say, well, pastor, that's, that's really referring to spiritual healing and helping people with drug addiction and alcoholism and all this. No, it's not. I can show you in the Bible. Look at Matthew chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. He says, he healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sorrows. He said that what Isaiah spoke might come to pass. He spoke it and he lived it and he carried our sorrows far away. Look, man, I, man, everybody's sitting there. Come on. Come on. Exodus. Is it chapter 15? I think it is. Chapter 15, verse 26. The children of Israel, they've left Egypt. What is Egypt a type of? Sin. How did they get out? God delivered them by His mighty hand. And they went into the desert. Baptism through the Red Sea. Anybody ever heard of that? Baptism, Red Sea, delivered by His mighty hand. And guess what was next? uh, Exodus 15. And... There was none. There was none that were sick. He said, I will put none of these diseases upon you which you have seen upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. As long as they walked in faith, as long as they walked in belief, there was provision for bodily healing made in their lives and upon them. Well, you know, the Hebrew word, the bear, to carry away. He took our sins at Calvary. He took our sins. 
He took our diseases. And when he claimed, it is finished. The battle is over. He paid the price. Our sins on the scapegoat were laid on the scapegoat and it was sent far away. But our diseases were laid on the scapegoat as well and it was carried away. And there is health and healing at the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Faith opens the door to healing. Faith opens the door to healing. Jesus said, have faith in God. He said that when there was no clear answer. Nothing is impossible to those who believe. You want another one? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. By faith, Noah built an ark to the saving of his family. Whatsoever things ye desire, when you pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. This is the word of God. This is where healing comes from, from faith. Unbelief limits God. It does. In Mark chapter 6, verses 5 and 6, he had come into Nazareth. He was doing his first sermon And it says, and he could do no mighty works because of their unbelief. Because of their unbelief, he was limited in what he could do for them. Why is it that on the mission field, why, you know, this isn't in my notes, I'm going to throw this in. Why is it some of the Baptists, some of the Baptist missionaries in in Brazil and and places all over the world, people are being healed and the word and signs and wonders and miracles confirming the word of the living God and it is moving and it's touching, but in the United States... Most of the churches are teaching, well, that day is gone. It went with the apostles. And, you know, the problem is they don't want to believe God. They don't want to teach it. They don't want to receive the miracles of God. But it's happening all over the world. And it's happening today in, in the mission field. Oh, it's so, it's so frequent. In Mark chapter 9, verse 23 says, if you can believe, all things are possible unto you. Your faith need not be perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect. One man said, Jesus, help thou my unbelief. And there was a glorious miracle. He said, if you've got grain, faith is the grain of a mustard seed. You can say to this mountain, be thou removed and it shall be moved. What you say can determine whether or not you're healed. Some of you right now are shutting out God saying, well, I I don't know about that. I just, uh, what you say can determine whether you're going to be healed. It really can. You can say, well, The doctor said that it's inoperable. The doctor said there's nothing he can do. The doctor said, or you can say, he sent his word and healed them. There is a miracle in your mouth. You can believe God. You can take a stand. You can believe God for your miracle this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The power of the spoken word. What are you speaking in your life? You can say, my God is able. My God is able. My God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. I want to tell you, how many times does he say, nothing is impossible with God? One more. There's healing in the word of God. 
The Bible says God sent his word and healed them. Who was the word? Jesus Christ was the living word of God and he healed them. He healed them from beginning to end as many as came to him. The living word went forth with healing. Proverbs 3 and 8. Proverbs 3 and 8. The word shall be health under your navel and marrow to your bones. What about, what's a navel? It's where the child receives nutrients. It receives blessing. It rece- you, know, you know a child is uh, in the mother's stomach and liquid. It, it, it can't breathe. There's no air. It would suffocate. But you know what? Through the navel, it gets constant. There's a lifeline. There is a lifeline. And it brings constant air and nutrients and life. And that baby is totally dependent upon that And the Word of God is your lifeline. It brings hope and health and freedom into your life and it causes you to live. What is the marrow? The red blood cells come from the marrow in the body and they have a missing nucleus and they carry oxygen and they carry food and they bring it and they're the source of life They're the source of physical strength and healing. The marrow. What is the Word of God? The Word of God is your lifeline. It is your hope. It is your help. You live according to your dependence upon this book. This is your lifeline. How many of us read it and know it? How many of us can speak it? Proverbs 4, 22 says the word of God is health to your flesh. If you want to be healed, speak the word. Meditate upon the word. Fill your mind with the word. Say this word. Claim this word. Believe this word. This is your lifeline. You are alive in Christ because of this word. You know, God calls himself your healer. Your deliverer. He calls himself the deliverer, the healer. In my distress, I called unto the Lord and he delivered me from all of my enemies. He delivered me and set me free. Oh, I want to tell you, you've got to do something. Jesus said, rise, take up your bed and walk. Rise, take up your bed and walk and you can be healed.